Good morning, good evening, and good in betweening. My name is Zinx. It's currently raining outside, so if you hear any of this, you should probably get back indoors. So this is an updated video to my old LVY setup tutorial that I have on my channel from about two years ago. It's a little bit outdated now, so I decided to update it by installing the new LVY in World of Warcraft in Warlords of Draenor. In this video, I'm going to go over downloading it from the website, setting it up in-game, and then what settings you can tinker with inside it. First things first, a quick Google of LVY will take you to tuckui.org. If the opening page does not have the downloads listed, navigate to the top left UIs button. Click on LVUI to find this page. If you are on here, the LVUI download is on the right. Navigating to the add-ons drop-down at the top of the screen will allow you to browse the add-ons available. Add-on skins is pretty much a necessity for every LVUI user. All it does is skin your available add-ons to look more like LVUI and fit in with the general theme. Shadow and Light is an optional edit I will go over after, through, after we go through base uh, LVUI. And XTC is a combat text add-on similar to mic scrolling battle text. I should add that you should uninstall and make sure to delete all previous versions of LVUI and their add-ons before installing new ones. Once downloaded, you can simply extract the files within each zip file to your World of Warcraft interface add-ons directory. After extraction, the folders inside your add-ons folder should look as such. Note that add-on skins does not appear down at the bottom because your folder is sorted alphabetically and add-on skins does not have an LVUI prefix. A correct install will have your in-game add-on list looking like this. Add-on skins must be enabled to do its thing, and LVUI config must be enabled to actually be able to, con to configure LVUI. I'm not enabling Shadow and Light yet, as I'll go over that after we get into the base LVUI. When first logging into the game, you should have an automatic pop-up telling you to install LVUI. Following the simple on-screen instructions will let you install fairly quickly and easily for your specific spec. If it isn't popping up for you, click the C under the minimap at the top right, or type forward slash EC in chat to bring up the LVUI config, and click the install button at the top center. Apart from just looking pretty sweet, LVUI gives us a myriad of ways in which to edit it and change it to our liking. If we open the config and enter the general tab on the left here, we can see a myriad of ways in which we can change the way LVUI functions at a very base level. This drop-down menu at the top will let you access more specific things. I highly recommend you dig into these general options, as they're simple, easy-to-use ways to configure LVUI in small degrees. The Action Bars menu is where we can edit our Action Bars. This is the first time we'll be opening the Toggle Anchors button. The Toggle Anchors button at the top here will open up all of the anchors for every LVUI element on the screen. This screen allows you to move all the elements on your UI without any hassle at all. If you wish to edit specific bars, Simply click on the drop-downs on the left, and you'll be able to edit things such as the number of buttons in a bar, the size of the buttons, and the spacing between them. Mousing over the visibility state code at the bottom will show you an example of how to set this to show or hide in combat or not. Similar to the action bars menu, the bags section allows you to change attributes which will affect how your bags appear in-game, such as font used for currency and the icons, spacing between them, and size of the icons. The Search Syntax section under the Bags drop-down will give you instructions and tips on how to search for specific items and item types inside your bags. The Buffs and Debuffs menu allows you to configure the size, font used, and offset of buff and debuff icons that show up in the game. The top right drop-down allows you to edit specifics for buffs and debuffs. This is not where you edit what types of buffs are shown and what aren't. That will come later in the Filters section. The functionality of LVUI's chat is pretty robust already, but the chat section can allow you to edit things such as whether your support or role icon appears within LFG, or how links behave, or whether you have emoticons when you use faces. The data text menu is where we change the small bits of information that are given to us underneath our minimap and chats. While it may not be clear at first, the two words at the top, general and panels, are in fact tabs. General allows you to add or edit, rather, how the, how the various texts appear. Panels allows you to choose where they go and where you have them. The nameplates section is where we edit nameplates. If you're not aware of what those are, nameplates are the small floating health bars that appear above character models in the game world. Here is where LVUI's editing really starts to shine for the average player. You can configure nameplates to be any color you want, change the font they use, and the offset of that font. 
Again, the drop down menu at the top right allows you to access more specific things such as the cost bar that shows what buffs or debuffs show on top of the nameplate and how it looks when you have threat. The skins and add-on skins tabs function more or less the same way with one slight caveat. The skins menu will allow you to select which elements of the Blizzard UI are skinned to look like Elv UI, while the add-on skins menu will let you select which ones you want to disable the Elv UI skinning for. Don't confuse yourself with this, add-on skins will pretty much do whatever you want right off the bat without any configuration. If you want to configure your boss mods such as DBM and voice encounter mods with the Elv UI skins, here's where you do it. The tooltip section of the LVUI uh, config allows you to change the way your tooltip looks and behaves. In the top right dropdown you can change things such as the visibility of your tooltip when it's active and the size of, of your health bar and the font it uses. In the general tab you can change things like the font it uses and the font size, as well as exactly what it's telling you about your target. The unit frames section of the LVUI config is where you can edit specific things about each frame, such as the size and shape. The coloring of the health bar, whether the mana bar is attached to the bar or not, whether buffs show on your unit frame or just next to your minimap or not as well. I can't go over every single element you can change here, but under the general unit frames tab, you can change things like the texture of the health bar, the font it uses, the size of the font, and what your health bar coloring looks like. Inside the dropdown for each frame, the first option allows you to change whether it's enabled or disabled. This lets you clean up your UI of elements that you don't need. The Show Auras button at the top right under Toggle Anchors will let you see what configurations you've made to auras under buffs and debuffs will look like on your frames. The drop down menu at the bottom right allows you to access things like your mana bar, whether to have a portrait, buffs, debuffs, and aura bars. These things allow you to change the text positioning offset of it as well as the coloring. Simply with the use of text offset, size differences, and changing fonts, you can use LVUI's editing to pretty much mimic every other add-on out there. The filters section of the LVUI menu is where people tend to get stumped when using it. What a filter is, is you can think of it as a folder in which you keep a specific number of, or specific types of buffs and debuffs, and then assign that folder by categorizing it to different indicators and buff indicators in the, the UI. For instance, I set up a filter titled Raid Debuffs, in that filter, I set the type to whitelist. Blacklist prevents it from showing, and whitelist makes sure that whatever it's detailed to show is showing. And then I add the spell IDs for the raid debuffs throughout the current raid content that you know you get from the bosses. Then I go into my raid frames and I set the debuff indicator to show an additional filter, and I set that additional filter to my raid debuffs. Now, when I go into a raid on my unit frames in the debuff indicator, it will make sure to also show the raid debuffs when they pop down on my players. So, in order to really drive home this filters idea, I'm going to follow through with that example, and I'm going to create a filter in this area called raid debuffs2, because there is already a default one in LVUI. Click OK, and I should find it in this list right at the bottom, because it's custom made. I'll set the filter type here for adding spells. I'll set the filter type to whitelist, because we want to see it and I do not have a spell set already, so I'm going to add a spell. Let's say we'll add Unstable Orb from uh, Iron Reaver. Click OK. Unstable Orb shows down here. Make sure it's enabled. And what happens is you go to Unit Frames. Let's go to Raid Frames. And let's quickly at the top here, you can click Display Frames to show you what it looks like. By de Mine's completely off. To show you what it looks like by default, let's just move the Raid Debuffs icon there. And go in the top right icon, go to debuffs. Raid debuffs indicator is not enabled by default. I tend to think it's quite cluttered if it is. Go to debuffs, which is the big center point here. I'm wrong. It's the top ones up there. And what happens is you go down to additional filters here under the filter section. Additional filters. Scroll down, open it and scroll down to raid debuffs 2. Now... The debuffs will show all default debuffs on the players that is set through the filters, as well as any debuffs that I just set through my custom filter, which I've attached to it. That being said, knowing how to make extensive use of the filters and creating your own and adding buffs and debuffs to them and reducing uh, some others isn't particularly needed. Unless you're having to manage a specific buff or debuff or something very niche in your raid group, it's not really going to matter. 
unless you really are at the cutting edge in some cases. So now let's talk about the shadow and light edit for, for LVUI. You install it just the same way as every other add-on for LVUI and LVUI itself. Make sure it's copied into the folder as I've shown earlier in the video. When you log in with shadow and light installed, you'll get a separate window pop-up uh, that asks you to install Shadow and Light just like LVUI does. This is just a series of quick, simple instructions that allow you to set up the basic features. There are a lot of nifty things that Shadow and Light can do, among which are being able to import filters, uh, filter settings, which is buff and debuffs and debuffs, and LVUI UI layouts uh, from other characters, as well as change some of the uh, the aspects in the minimap, being able to hide it in certain areas, um, changing a lot or adding information to it and uh, a whole bunch of other things, including extra data text and cleaning up the areas around the edge of the screen where the UI elements aren't exactly touching the edge if you want to, just by default. Um, in my old video, I set up a guide on how to import other players, uh, you know, import other players' UI layouts and add-on configurations and filters and things. I'm not gonna show that here because many of these authors, or at least the three of them that are here, including Affinity. Affinity was a healer for Blood Legion who no longer raids anymore. So his UI layout and filter settings are going to be outdated. Um, I wouldn't recommend installing them or importing from other players as you might end up with something that's not quite useful or it's missing something you, that you need. Um, it's much better to, to maybe look elsewhere for more updated versions of these. But some of the real nasty things are that the data text panels uh, you can get more of them and you can get uh, you can set them up in more general uh, not more general but more specific ways and most importantly to me at least is the armory mode which affects your character view screen as well as when you're inspecting other characters what it does is your items are all shown up with uh, very clearly highlighted um, outlines of their quality it shows the item level next to it as well as their durability what enchants you have on them and what gems are filling the slots very, very quick uh, inspections of other characters. And all of this on top of very good customization of minor UI elements like the, the zone text when you enter another zone or the miscellaneous text, which are, you know, um, mailbox text and all that sort of stuff. So thanks for watching, everyone. I really hope this guide helped in some way. If it did, please consider liking, maybe subscribing for more content in the future. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on uh, if there's anything else you would like to know. But until next time, I've been Zinx, you've been the internet, see you around.